Now this is a, a little video just to show you, Andre suggested we do, this is to show you what happens with a misspent life when you're a car nut. And everything I do is pretty much everything in excess, nothing in moderation, that's always been my, my motto. So when I was first given a car badge, I thought that was the neatest thing, that's the jewelry that, that a, a beautiful woman would wear, well this is the jewelry that a car would wear. And I just loved it. And then I got another one and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and that turned into hundreds. Then that turned into thousands. That turned into a passion that's taken me all over the world getting these crazy things. And since then, at my age, I decided I better start doing something with these things to get rid of them. And I have disposed of, um, of probably 5,000, but I still have a few left, and I thought we'd like to share some of these with you. Andreas, come on in and... and uh, these are just some of the stand-up badges. A lot of these are uh, early British uh, uh, Royal Automotive Club and uh, Automobile Association. We've even got them. See this one here is from Hawaii. Very, very rare because they were just little tin things painted and, and they all went away. I don't know how many of them are left. But anyway, just to, this, I made this case just so we could put all our junk in it. And let me start showing you a few of these drawers, what we have in them. So you can get a little bit of an idea of what advanced retardation can do to one when you have auto retardation. These are wonderful things, beautiful. You have to look at these things as works of art. Beautiful cloisonne in design. Each one of these things, they're just, uh, some of these German pieces are just absolutely magnificent. I have hundreds of them, absolutely hundreds of them, and I'm just going to kind of pull through the drawers so you can see, get a little bit of an idea of some of the variety. Some of these pieces here, these AA ones, and AAA and NMA, National Motor Association, these go back to the turn of the century and the very early teens. These are all cloisonne. And when you were with the NNA, NMA is actually the establishment that was brought in before the AAA became evident. These here were all absolutely brand new. I had found a fellow who had bought the company that uh, manufactured these pieces. And so I was lucky enough to be able to entice him to sell them to me so I could carry on this load. Now we're going to go on down the road a little bit, just quickly showing you some of the variety. They're all messed up and they all roll into the back of the case. Some of them are filled in the front and the others are in the back. But you can get an idea of what some of these things are. They're cased there. I've got everything from racing cars and beautiful old motorcycle pieces and I mean it just goes on and on and on and on. I won't bore you with it but I guess I will bore you with it. But you can see each one of these individually designed and built. Look at this. Aren't they just, they're absolutely amazing. And with the, now cars don't really even use them because they're all teardropped and, and kind of little bent out of shape little things that all look the same. The only difference is the cost of the, the equipment. But they're all just about the same. But you have a few individual ones. I'll just very slide them down. Hong Kong. And I mean, they're from every country in the world. I have hundreds and thousands of them that go back you know, right almost to the turn of the century, some of these things. These are just AA and not pretty, inter not very interesting. Now we'll go to a couple of these. Absolutely amazing stuff. Bentley and Rolls Royce and uh, uh, Mark cars and events and there's things like this is from the Brooklyn's Track Junior Car Club. And people say, well, what's a Junior Car Club? Well, that was for the smaller horsepower cars that ran the outer circuit at Brooklyn's between 1907 and 1939 when it closed off. Uh, you have your big Brooklyn's racers. and I mean, just unbelievable stuff. Very interesting pieces. Oh, this is a pretty interesting one. Now, these are of quite quality. This is associate badge, but this is British Racing Drivers Clubs. This one here, British Auto Racing Club, Brooklyn's Auto Racing Club. And these were all signed and all numbered. This is number 374, and it's given to an individual person. 
and they still have them. Now, here's an interesting piece. Now, can you imagine how many of these are left? Touring Club of Iran. That's pre-World War I, pre-World War II. Here's one that I received. I picked that up. That went to the Rolls-Royce Jewel. It was Jordan. We drove through Jordan with our Rolls and Bentleys and had a hell of a time. Was treated royally, literally by the royal family. But look at these cars. Look at these things. Absolutely amazing. What's that? Just now on to the next drawer. We're almost through with this here, just to, just to give you an idea of what they are. Jordanian Auto Club. This is from the teens and the 20s. Beautiful cloisonne. Look at the, look at the workmanship that's in this. This is uh, Auto Club of Italy, still in the original box. And this was shipped over. You can see how long ago it was. Three five-cent stamps. I mean, this is uh, unbelievable pieces that we have hidden and tucked away here. And this is just a small part of them because I have this many drawers out into one of the garages and each drawer is three times the size of this and they're stacked in layers. This is an interesting badge, just to tell you what this was. This was the uh, Paramount Studios Club Sports Car Club. Well, what this was, this was given to the hookers in the 40s and the 50s, and they'd have that on their car, and they would go into Paramount Studios and take care of businesses, and this is what got them in there. Now, talk about a rare bit of, of uh, Hollywood history. That's a hooker's badge. Isn't that something? I mean, can you believe this? I mean, we have badges for everything. Badges, I don't need no stinking badges. Well, these badges you need. This is an interesting one. This is from an Eastern European bloc country. Uh, and if you look at the helmet, I think you can figure out where that's from. There were uh, originally 50 of these struck or less. And when you had that on your car, you would be either... Uh, one of the highest of the uh, the politico, and if you you could be driving down the road, and if you ran into a bus of ch school children and the bus crashed and burned, and all the ch people are laying out in the street, and that they would come to you and say, "Oh, are you okay? Oh, you may proceed," and it was your fault. But that's how high up that was. That's a very rare badge, also. And you can see why many of these badges didn't last because they were porcelain on tin. And you can see they get a little one little stone chip, and they're gone. That's that's probably 85, 90 years old. It's got one little chip, but it's better than not having it at all. More, more, more Egyptian. Isn't that unbelievable? This is a Spanish one. Automobile Real. These are just wonderful, just un unbelievable things. Now, this one commemorates Nuremberg Ring, the racetrack in Germany. Unbelievable pieces. You can see that they are really works of art. Unfortunately, laying around here, they do get broken up and chipped, which is a shame, and that's why I, I guess I shouldn't be allowed to keep them any longer. So I'm going to make them available to uh, whoever wants to stand up. Hopefully, it'll be a museum or some like entity. This is one from Tahiti. How many car clubs do you think are in Tahiti? How many cars are in Tahiti when this was done? This is Cloisonne also. Beautiful thing. This is India. You're going to like this one very, very much. This is the Vintage Car Club of India. It is wonderful. And with each one, you get some chicken, you know what. And the bottom drawer. Oh my God. Isn't that something? More junk. And later on, we'll take you out in the garage and we'll expand on this into a, another one. This course, this thing here, I designed and built this myself. And that's probably why it's not so wonderful. But at least it, it was a place to store badges. And I had to have them. And these are all just some of the highlight of the top badges that would sit and be mounted on the radiator cap in a very prominent location and that showed your affiliation to the car club. What this is is an extension of uh, Armouret. Uh, in the old days uh, 
you would you would have your shield with your prince's signature on it, which would be his coat of arms, and that's how you could tell who you were against fighting. And your armies would be half uh, would have your coat, his coat of arms, your prince's coat of arms. The others would carry theirs. So this has just uh, been carried through the centuries, and this is the latest, basically, edition of it. And that was, we did that, we jousted with our cars rather than with our lances. And you can see this is a bit messy, but this is my pub, pub room and collection carrier and catch-all and junk pit. And we collect a little bit of everything. This is our library and so forth and uh, it's kind of fun and uh, we've had a lot of one thing that's very cool is that you never get bored with this place if you don't like it you just trade it off and you get another one or something else unfortunately I have a wife that will put up with me which is uh, saying something anyway this is the pub and uh, We'll end this in a second with going up here, and this is a collection of uh, flying ladies, the mascots, the spirit of ecstasies, and uh, some of them are original, some of them are knockoffs that have been done. This, this one here shows the flying lady with clipped wings in her, in her short skirt, so I guess she had a tough time of it all. But anyway, welcome, and I'm glad that you were able to join me on this little cruise. Uh, through Never Never Land, and uh, we'll see you again. Goodbye.